Why come you here, the red coats? Your mind with madness fills. In your valley there is danger. There's danger in our hills. Oh, hear you not the singing of the bugle wild and free. For oh, soon you'll hear the ringing of the rifle from the tree. For oh, the rifle, for oh, the rifle. In our hands will prove no trifle. You ride a goodly steed. You may know a better master. You forward come with speed, but you'll learn to back much faster when you meet our mountain boys and their leader, Johnny Stark. Boys who make but little noise, boys who always hit their mark for the rifle, for the rifle. In our hands will prove no trifle. Have you no graves at home across the briny water? But forward you must come like bullocks to the slaughter. Ah, oh, if we the work must do, then tis quicker tis begun. If flint and trigger prove but true, the sooner twill be won for the rifle, the rifle. In our hands will prove no trifle. Why am I singing a song about Vermont? It's because it is about the riflemen at Bennington who, who had a, a firm um, victory over Burgoyne. And it's about rifles. And that's what this place was about. Long Pond Iron Works, deeply vital to the Revolutionary War. It was here that the armaments and the implements were so important to the Continental Army. This is where they were made. And so today, we are going to look at the story, the early history of Long Pond Iron Works, as seen through the songs of the people who worked and lived here. It all started 1766, when Peter Hasenclaver came here, purchased all sorts of land, and then imported more than 500 European workers and their families, mostly German, and they are coming here to build a life. So, to honor them, we'll start with the German too. On an instrument, that is of German inspiration as well. It's the mountain dulcimer, and it um, German settlers in Pennsylvania created it, invented it because they missed the zithers they'd left behind in the old country. So it'll be perfect here to bring back the German roots of this place. Musiden, Musiden, Zustiet Lenus. Stiefelenus, whom do my shots life's tear? Then he come, then he come, then he wieder und komm, wieder und komm, carry ein mein shots by dear. Can he gleich net over by diesen, and he do mein Freude und dear? Then he come, then he come, then he wieder und komm, wieder und komm, carry ein mein Schatz bei dir. So of course they were singing German at first, but later perhaps they're changing their tune to a, a little song that had been written during the French and Indian War. On a pony, stuck a feather in his hat, called it macaroni. Yankee Doodle, keep it up, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Mind the music and the step with the girls behind. And so 
they are here building a life out of wilderness. It's a wilderness again now, as you can see. This is what they came to. And they had to carve roads through this and build houses and farms and build factories and build forges. Tremendous amounts of work, living off the land, really, making do with whatever they had. And um, this song is about that. It is, and I'll play it by making do, because the only pick you had for a mountain dulcimer was a quill, a goose quill or a turkey feather were the picks. And, uh, and this song about this song about um, making things out of nothing. A farmer's pig dies of the measles and he's not going to waste it. He's going to find a, a part, a, a find a use for every part of that. Make him do. Well, how do you think I began in the world? I got me a sow and several other things. The sow took the measles and she died in the spring. What do you think? I made of her hide the very best. Saddle you ever did ride, saddle a bridle or any such thing. The sow took the measles and she died in the spring. What do you think? I made of her tail the very best whip that ever saw sail. Whip or whip suck it any such thing. So took the measles and she died in the spring. What do you think I made of her nose? The very best thimble that ever sewed clothes. Thimble or thread or any such thing. So took the measles and she died in the spring. What do you think I made of her feet? The very best pickles you ever did eat. Pickles or glue or any such thing. The sow took the measles and she died in the spring. <laughs> and so making do and yet creating an amazing place that became so important. And then once the forges are and foundries are built. Um, there's lots of um, <clears throat> lots of uh, blacksmiths around, and so I have a blacksmith song. All there's lots of blacksmith songs, and they're all revealing the scalawags that they were, especially when it came to romance. Oh, blacksmith courted me nine months or better and when he won my heart he wrote me a letter with his hammer in his hand he looked so clever and if i was with my love i would live forever oh where is my love gone with his lips like posies and his black tricorn hat on, decked round with primroses. I'm afraid the scorching sun will mar his beauty. And if I was with my love, I would do my duty. It's not what you promised me when you lay down beside me. You said you'd marry me, and you'd not deny me. If I said I'd marry you, it was only to try you. So bring your witness on, and I'll not deny you. Witness have I none, save the Almighty. And he'll surely punish you for the slighting of me. Looking in the glass makes my poor heart tremble to think I loved a lad 
the proof deceitful. Strange news has come to town. Strange news is carried. And now it's all the talk that my lovey is married. I wish them both much joy, though they can't hear me. I never will die for love, kind friends, believe me. Well, in uh, 1771, there was a new ironmaster. It was a Scotsman named Robert Erskine. He took over and he, of course, it's, it's the early 1770s. He's feeling what is happening in this country and he wants to make sure to protect the ironworks from the British. So he raises his own um, company. Um, of volunteers. They are um, forgemen and carpenters uh, from 40 to 75 of them. And they drill right here um, as the revolution began. They are drilling right here in Long Pond. Well, um, under Erskine, <clears throat> this place, as I said, provided arms and uh, and provisions of all sorts for uh, implements for the um, <clears throat> Continental Army, and it even um, was uh, brought the iron that was used to help fortify the Hudson River. You know, the British wanted desperately to get control of the Hudson. If they did, they could separate New England from the southern colonies, divide and conquer. They would have us if they could separate us. And so it was a struggle over the Hudson throughout the entire revolution. And the Americans got busy and built a chain and a boom across the Hudson at West Point. The iron from here was part of the boom that was part of that chain to stop British ships from going up there. So again, this place provided exactly what was uh, needed. Um, Erskine met George Washington. Washington was very impressed. He saw uh, what a brilliant man he was. He asked him to be his general surveyor. So on top of everything he's doing here, he is mapping out all the territory along the Hudson and helped uh, Washington find his roots uh, in the war. Well, <clears throat> the soldiers may have had, and did, thanks to Long Pond Ironworks, have the armaments, but it doesn't mean that they had clothes or food. Washington was extremely upset with um, how the um, colonial governors were not helping financially. And um, he wrote a letter from his Newburgh headquarters in 1781 to the governors. The aggravated calamities and distresses that have resulted to the soldiers from a total want of pay for nearly 12 months, the want of clothing at a severe season, and not infrequently, the want of provisions are beyond description. I give it decidedly as my opinion that it is vain to think that an army can be kept together much longer under such a variety of sufferings. Well, the French 
saw it too as they were about to embark on the march to Yorktown with us and they're camped over here with us at Dobbs Ferry. So let's just hear the soldiers' conditions. Count uh, de Clermont Crocourt roams the camp and he says he is stunned by the destitution. The men without uniforms, covered with rags, most of them barefoot. There it is, and there's many, many French observations of us in that condition. That's why soldiers needed a sense of humor. They were freezing, starving, and they needed to laugh about it. So luckily there were songs for them, like this one. A soldier dressed in rags, and a girl sees him, falls madly in love with him, and tries to bribe him to marry her. Soldier, soldier, will you marry me with your musket, knife, and drum? How can I marry such a pretty girl as you when I've got no shoes to put on? So off to the shoe shop, she did go, fast as she could run. Brought him back the finest that was there, and the soldier put it on. Oh, soldier, soldier, will you marry me with your musket, knife, and drum? How can I marry such a pretty girl as you when I've got no coat to put on? Off to the coat shop, she did go. Fast as she could run, brought it back with finest it was there, and the soldier put it on. Soldier, soldier, will you marry me now? Did he must get five and drum? How can I marry such a pretty girl as you when I've got no hat to put on? Off to the hat shop she to go. Fast as she could run. Brought him back, the finest it was there, and the soldier put it on. Oh, soldier, soldier, will you marry me now with your musket, five and drum? How can I marry such a pretty girl as you? With a wife and twelve children at home. Ah, yes. Things don't change all that much. This is a song that helped them laugh at their terrible so they needed some stuff like that. Oh. Well, soldiers needed to dance also. And the people here, any community, dancing was the main um, entertainment. And that's why I have this instrument. Um, this is the hammered dulcimer. Wooden hammers hitting strings. And it is, um, it was perfect for the dances. Itinerant musicians would bring these into taverns and then you could have a dance. Or if you had a fiddler in town, you definitely had a dance also. So let us hear what they might have danced here in Montreal. What tunes? Perhaps, perhaps this one, which was a very popular British dance tune called King George's Minuet. But when, and we love the tune, but when the revolution happened, that title had to go. We called it Congress Minion.
Well, I happen to bring a dancer along with me. And he's just, just the thing for the uh, end of the war. We're doing a lot of dancing. This. job here and he died on and was buried on um, 1780 George Washington came it was that important to him well um 
this place as we can hear from all the 18th century history we've been looking at. It's holy ground as far as I'm concerned. So I always like to end with a hymn to remind us of that and all of those lives that were here and uh, did so much for our country in the service of uh, what they did in these families. And so this is perfect because it is also by a Scotsman. Um, John Newton, Scottish sea captain, who had been the captain of a slave ship. Didn't really think about it, just was doing his job, until one day at sea, a tremendous storm came up. And in the middle of it all, he had a vision. He was on his knees praying, and he said, please let me live. I see the error of my ways, and I want another chance. In the morning, the seas were calm, and he had made it, and everyone had made it through that storm. And he was true to his word, he gave up the slave trade. He spent the rest of his life writing hymns. And the most beautiful hymn he wrote, the most important one, was about that miracle that happened that day on that ship. Thank you.